Let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. We are all brethren of one parentage. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Olumba Olumba Obu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, St. Matthew chapter 23, verse 8. Second lesson, St. John chapter 10, verse 16. Golden text, Galatians chapter 3, verses 28 to 29. The genealogy of mankind. Quote, brethren, after reading the three texts, it will be clear to you what the mind of God, the mind of the Son of God, and the mind of the Holy Spirit is before delivering, before delving into the discourse. Of the gospel today, I want to narrate to you the genealogy story. It is said that the generation of the grade that is of the grandchildren stands polluted. You are not to blame because you do not know how this generation comes about. But I am now going to trace a little so that you realize that all the inhabitants of the world are one. Do not claim the nationality of, of a Nigerian or a Bright or a Britain or a United States of America or to have belonged to the African, European or Asian continent. If you do that, you are only expressing short-sightedness because you do not know the full implication of what you claim. If two persons meet for the first time, unless each of them introduces them himself and traces his genealogy, each will claim he has never known the other. Sometimes you will be ignorant that your great-grandfather related to his great-grandfather. Maybe he went to live in India and yours lived in Ethiopia. It is only when you meet and introduce yourself and trace your pedigree trees that you will know the extent of your relationship with him. As we are here, we do not know that some of us came from India, some from Russia, others from Ghana, or Cameroon, or America, and other places. It is only when the pedigree tree is traced that you will actually ascertain the relationship and that you both come from the same stock. The tracing of the genealogy is a different story, and it is by way of digression. But that is not the theme of our sermon today. Only the Holy Spirit can lead man to the wisdom of truth. A great many people complain that the words of the Father are not easy to hear. This is true because except you possess spiritual ears, you cannot hear and understand even a word, even the village. You hail from when the elderly fellows begin to narrate the history of the village, you will not understand unless you have the ears to hear. What is causing confusion in the world is that there is no honest person. If we were to have even a 
singular man of truth, then everything would have been all right. But our problem is that we are hungry people. Assure me how a hungry person can tell the truth. It is sin that brings about division. It has also brought about hunger. That was why our Lord Jesus Christ said when, the, when he the comforter, even the spirit of truth comes, he will lead you unto the accurate wisdom of truth. There is nothing else, whether man or angel or tree or water or spirit or any other thing conceivable which can lead man to the accurate wisdom of the truth except the Holy Spirit. He is the Bible is the ark of the covenant. Since our Lord Jesus Christ had made a far reaching statement before Abraham was I am he is the only person who has the right to reveal the secret of this kingdom unto mankind. I believe that you all have the ears to hear. In the past, it used to be said, let those who have ears hear. But now you have all been given the ears to hear because this is the era in which every person has to hear the word of God. Do not be anxious about what is going on because when God predicts, unless it is the fullness of time, the prediction cannot be manifested. When he says a certain thing would happen, hold on to that statement because come what may, it will come to pass as he had said if you want to know what is in this world and in the world to come take up the bible which is the ark of the covenant and search diligently it contains absolutely everything in the world all other books you write, publish and read are useless. The only book is the Bible which is inevitable, which is invariably the Ark of the Covenant, the mind of God, the will of God, the plan of God, the covenant of God and contains everything which has happened and which will happen. All other books are elementary spirits because they contain the voices, the wisdom, the mind and the plan of man. But the Bible was written by the inspiration of God. It was God himself who passed through certain spiritually inspired people to write it. That is why from Genesis to the revelation of John the Divine, the contents are but the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Do not therefore doubt now how the whole world will be amalgamated. Do not ask any question. If you are led by the Spirit of God, you will discover that the whole world is now united into one fold. Both the whites and the blacks are one indivisible entity. You have now come to the realization that God is one who promises and fulfills. He plans and executes. He is the truth and his words are true. God made a promise to our father Abraham that he would be the father of all nations at a time when Abraham did not even yet beget even a child. 
he also showed him the land on which he would grow and inherit for himself and for all his descendants. Who in the world? No. Who in the world, in the whole world, can mention one location of the land given to him by God? Who can mention that one child of Abraham? Not children, that is only child. You will realize that I am not a preacher, not a visioner, and not a prophet. Neither do I come to bear testimony, but I came to reveal God and His glory plainly to His totality to mankind and all that was hidden. No difference between the whites and the blacks. Notice that the judgment book, the Ark of the Covenant, has now been brought. Whoever therefore denies that he is a child of God should come out and I will trace his antecedents until he will see his nakedness and accept the truth. If a white man comes, I will call him brother. If he, if he, uh, if he argues that he is not my brother, I will trace his genealogy until he discovers where he originated and accept he is my brother. No person should continue to doubt. Call in here every person in the world to come and look at himself in the mirror. Whatsoever you claim to be, once you come in here, you will be revealed so that you know yourself and depart from stupidity. Do you conjecture that the gospel of God is spoken of and or is preached as a result of eye education or as a figment of imagination? What has Paul said? He says, For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, not with intelligence, not with legal knowledge or craftiness, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. No distinction between the Christians and the Muslims. I also wish that a Muslim is brought to me and I will ask him who his father is. I will also call him a brother. If he denies that he is my brother, I will show him in, ex in inexplicable terms and he will confirm and confess that he is my brother. If he is a brother, why then does he not agree with and accept me? If a white man confesses that he is my brother, why can we not sit on the same table and discuss issues of common interest? I want to show you that the promise which God made with Abraham, our father, is today manifested. It is said, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. God does not regret our election. That land God promised to give to Abram to live on, inherit and inhabit with his children is this world. The earth and the child promised Abram by God refer to mankind. You are that child. Notice what is read to you. 
There is neither Jew nor Greek nor Hebrew. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus our Lord. And if you are of the Christ, then are you not Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise? Abraham, the friend of God, you have heard that it was true what Abraham did. He became the friend of God. God also was his friend. What does it mean to be one's friend? He was not his own child or servant. You know what the concept of friendship means. The son mentioned is the Christ. Notice that Abraham is the father and the Christ is the Lord. When you begin to talk of Abraham, from where did the Christian descend? From where did the Muslim originate? From where did the Hinduist spring? From where did the bodies originated? Call yourself what you may. People of all races and creeds and faith originated from Abraham. He is the only father and he is the only father of the entire world. That is why most Christians refer to him as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. If you now begin to trace the origin of the various races, tribes, clans, and ethnic groups in the world world, you will trace that their pedigree tree to Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot the twelve prominent men we all know about from the Bible. Ishmael was also the child of Abraham. Forget about the argument that Hagar, the mother of Ishmael, hailed from Egypt. But one thing is certain and that is Ishmael is the first son of Abraham and Isaac was the second. This explains why the Muslims accuse us of worshipping the child of the second son instead of the first. But can you see the source of the misunderstanding between the Christians and the Muslims? It is not that the Muslims have not known about Abraham. They have known him as the father God had assigned him specifically as the father of all the nations of the world and his children to rule. It is similar to what used to obtain traditionally in our culture. If you beget a child but you did not pay the bride price for the mother of the child, then the child will be regarded as illegitimate child and therefore does not share in the inheritance of the father. But what happens today? Once you have impregnated a woman, any child who is born as a result of the pregnancy belongs to you. He is your, legit he is your legitimate child. There is now no question of illegitimacy. A child is the father's blood. If you impregnate another person's wife, I have not said you should impregnate or have an affair with any person's wife. It is only an illustration I want to use an earthly thing to illustrate an heavenly thing for you. Once you enter yourself into such an involvement, you have 
to empty the water in the pot and hand over the pot to the husband of the woman. That child is your blood. Once the child is delivered, you take your child and the husband takes the wife away. Do not shift the ancient boundary and do not trespass. This means that the Holy Spirit has come into the world to lead you and to remove the scales from your eyes because you claim that you are wise, whereas there is no wise man among you. The Muslims argue that the Christians are foolish for worshipping the child of the second son of Abraham and that they are the wise and right thinking men since they worship the child of the first son of Abraham. Who are the wise between the Muslim and the Christian? Both Christians and Muslims know Abraham, but neither do the Muslims know the Christian, nor do the Christians know the Muslims, each claiming to be wise and calling others foolish. Which of them is foolish or wise? Both Christians and Muslims are blind, leading the blind. Who is Isaac and who is Ishmael? Are the two not begotten of Abraham? This is one aspect of it. The elder will serve the younger. Isaac came and begot two children, Esau and Jacob. The two of them were twins, but Esau first touched down on the ground. That was why he was regarded as the first son. If Jacob were to were the first to come out of the mother's womb, he would have been the first son. But that it might be fulfilled that which was written in the scriptures that it is not of him who wills or of him who runs the race, but of God who shows mercy. If Esau were to know that before they were born, there had been a prophecy that the elder will serve the younger, Esau would not have struggled to come out first. He would have stayed back in the womb for a little while to allow Jacob to come out first. But since he struggled to come out first, and it was prophesied that the elder will serve the younger, and he came out as the elder, that prophecy was fulfilled in him. Esau and Jacob symbolizes the black and the white races. But take note that knowledge will vanish away, prophecies will fail, and tongues and languages will cease, but love will not pass away forever. Who are these twins, Esau and Jacob? They are two nations. Which nations are these? This symbolizes the white and the black races. All whites, no matter their stations and disposition in life, are the children of Isaac. In the same token, all blocks of any description and disposition are the children of Isaac. So, both the whites and the blacks are of the same parentage. I want to, I want a white person to agree. I want a white person to argue for or against this statement. I am making this declaration from high heaven and so I want this, this gospel to be written, published, disseminated, circulated and distributed to all parts of the world, to men of all walks of life if their eyes will not be opened 
and they confessed that they had all among they had all along been foolish and in darkness all the inhabitants of the world are brothers and sisters can you tell me what excludes Isa from the family of Isaac and why he cannot claim the right of the first son he was a hunter he loved his father and served him and he was not blameworthy but simply because it was prophesied that the elder will serve the younger the prophecy was fulfilled and having been fulfilled it was moved away but the truth has now stood up jacob came and begot the 12 tribes of israel israel was the tribe of jacob but what about the tribe of Esau and all the tribes of and all and all the tribes and nations not included among the 12 tribes of israel they are referred to as the other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. How many fold and how many shepherd? There must be one fold and one shepherd. In the same token, Ishmael, who was cast away, represents the other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also must be brought, that there may be one fold under one shepherd. Can you now realize the rationale that all mankind descended from one stock? It is therefore nonsensical for you to claim to be a Christian or a Muslim, or a Buddhist, or a Hinduist, or a Judaist, because all creeds and races originated from Isaac. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. All the people from Adam down to Cain are outside the fold. Cain is the, bro Cain is the other sheep which are not of this fold all those who err and those who do not err for reason of their ignorance the precious blood of our lord jesus christ was shedded for their sake to redeem them all so that the gap between the various races and creeds and nations and languages and tribes might forever be bridged that also there may be one sheep and one shepherd. The blood of Christ cleanses all of us. All the sins committed by Cain, all the evils wrought by the people, including sowing the seeds of division, discrimination, and segregation, cause wars and rumors of war, bring about darkness in the world, the covenant was that only the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ would cleanse them. Since the precious blood was shedded and he said on the cross, it is finished. He had forgiven all the sins of the world and that is why also he said, I will be merciful unto their unrighteousness and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. This alone is responsible for the fact that we all belong to the same fold under the one shepherd. Our Lord Jesus Christ died for the sake of Adam and Eve, for the sake of Cain and Abel, for the sake of all those who commit one form of sin or the other, and for all the sins of the entire world. God has never deceived and will never deceive. That is why it is said, after those days, I will put my laws into their mind, 
and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother to know God. For all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their, and their iniquities will I remember no more. Observe that God has forgiven all our sins, whether they are deliberate or mistakenly committed, and the sins of the whole world from Adam till today, he does not remember them anymore. He rejoices with all mankind and does not impute sins on any person. If he has forgiven all our sins, what are we? Are we not all brotherhood? All of us are brothers and sisters. A white man is your brother. The black man is also your brother to the white. The white woman is your sister. Any human being in the world is a child of God. He is a brother. For God does not beget any angel. The first lesson will now be read. Listen attentively. However, all the inhabitants of the world have been given the ear to hear the word of God.